In this section, we are going to be working on solving trigonometric equations over a certain interval and then over the set of the entire real number system. We're going to solve sine x equals root 2 minus sine x first over the interval from 0 to 2 pi and then over the set of real numbers. And over the set of real numbers just means that we are including that period because remember sine is 2 pi periodic, so you'll get these solutions every 2 pi whatever your solution is, let's say it's pi over 2, then you would add 2 pi to that. That would be your next time you would get the solution. And then 2 more pi and so on. It just keeps happening over and over and over again because sine is cyclical and repeats itself every 2 pi. First thing that we want to do is we want to isolate for the trigonometric functions. We are going to get sine on one side of the equation, just like you would in any algebraic equation. So I'm going to take the sine of x equal to the square root of 2 minus sine of x, and I'm going to add sine of x to both sides. And when I do that, I'm getting the trigonometric function on one side with the values on the right. So I still don't have sine of x, so what I want to do is divide by 2 on both sides, and I have that the sine of x is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Now that I have sine of x equal to some value, I want to look at the unit circle and figure out where is sine of x equal to root 2 over 2. And if you look on a unit circle, you're looking for when the y value is root 2 over 2. And the root 2 over 2s happen when you're dealing with the pi over 4 angles or 45 degrees. The y is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. And so that means we're going to be dealing with the pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So this first answer for A, the interval in which sine of x equals root 2 over 2, is going to be 4 pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Now we are going to adjust our answers for the interval to the set of real numbers. And we use the fact that sine is 2 pi periodic. And we're going to take each answer. We're going to add 2 n pi. We don't need to do any simplification or anything like that. Um, our answers are what they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the solution set as x such that x equals pi over 4 plus 2n pi and x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2n pi for all n, n, z. And remember that means that these are n's, these are integers. So for all n's that are integers, negative or positive. This is a multiple angle trigonometric equation. We have cosine of 3x instead of cosine of x. Sometimes people will use substitution and they'll say 3x equals u. I'm not going to actually do out substitution. I'm just going to show you how I wind up solving. We're going to use the same method as the previous example. And notice that a and b are reversed, where we're first finding the general solution and then we're second finding on the interval. And the general solution cosine is 2 pi periodic, so we're going to consider 2 pi when we're writing our solutions. We're going to solve for cosine of x first. We have cosine 3x equals negative 1. Now let's consider where cosine is negative 1. On the unit circle, that means that x is negative 1, and that happens at pi. So cosine of 3x equals negative 1 happens at pi. That means that 3x equals pi, because the cosine of 3x equals negative 1, and cosine of pi equals negative 1, so 3x equals pi. Dividing both sides by 3, we get x equals pi over 3. For the general solution, we need the period. 3x equals pi plus 2n pi, because remember, cosine is 2n pi periodic. And to solve for x, we divide through by 3. That means that x equals pi over 3 plus 2 thirds n pi. And so our general solution is x equals pi over 3 plus 2 thirds n pi. For a, we're going to write that as x such that x equals pi over 3 plus 2 thirds n pi. And remember, that's for all n in the set of integers. Using our general solution, 
what are the values within that range from 0 to 2 pi. So let's start out by saying n equals 0 and find out what our solution is. So for n equals 0, we have pi over 3 plus 0. So our first answer is pi over 3. Now we want to know if there are more. Let's try it for n equals 1. That's going to be pi over 3 plus 2 thirds times 1 plus pi or 2 thirds pi. So 1 pi over 3 plus 2 thirds pi over 3 is 3 pi over 3, which is just pi. Let's keep going because we're still in the interval. What about n equals 2? That's pi over 3 plus 2 thirds 2 pi or pi over 3 plus 4 thirds pi. So 1 third pi plus 4 thirds pi is 5 thirds pi. That's still less than 2 pi. Let's try for n equals 3. We have pi over 3 plus 2 thirds 3 pi or pi over 3 plus 6 thirds pi. 1 third plus 6 thirds is 7 thirds pi. And that's bigger than 2 pi, so we, that's no longer in our interval from 0 to 2 pi. And so our solution set on the interval from 0 to 2 pi is pi over 3 pi and 5 pi over 3.